Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to do a multiplicative uh, time series model. This is going to be going off the video that we made before this. Um, we're going to do a decomposition of a time series. We're going to have a trend component and a cyclical component. We're not going to do the seasonal component. It is the exact same as the cyclical component. So today we're just going to be modeling um, a value we're going to call Y. This could be something viewed as like sales of toys. Um, and this is just going to be equal to T, which is our trend, times C, which is our cyclical component. And again, we'll always have epsilon, which is going to be our error. Um, again, this is a multiplicative model because we are multiplying together the trend and the cyclicality to get the prediction for Y. Uh, more statistically true, I guess, is the Y hat, which is our prediction, is going to be equal to um, our trend times our cyclical component. So the data we have here, um, we have the first column, which is time. This is going to be 1 through 16. Um, the green just indicates the years. So 1 through 4 is going to be quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3, quarter 4. And that's going to be in year 1. And then um, 5, 6, 7, and 8 is going to be the first, second, third, and fourth quarter of the year 2, and so on. And if we plot this out, we'll end up with a chart like this one, where you can see on the bottom here we have time. Um, it's going to have from 0 to 16. Again, 17 and 18 are not on this chart. These could be forecasted values if we're going to use this for forecasting. And then on the left-hand side, we have our Y values. But to do the decomposition here, the first step here is going to be doing the trend component. So we have all of our data here. We want to put some line in the middle here, um, again, called T. Um, to do a simple line here, going back to linear algebra and basic statistics, we're going to actually have to estimate this line given our data. So just as a reminder here, step one is going to be calculating um, beta. This is going to be the slope coefficient um, of our model. And if you remember, uh, the equation for this is going to be n times the summation of x and y. Um, minus the summation of x times the summation of y, and then this is all divided by n, where the summation of x squared minus the summation of x, and then this value squared. Um, again, in our case, right, x is going to be equal to t, which is our time, it's our x-axis, so this equation uh, actually just becomes n times the summation of t of y minus the summation of t um, times the summation of y. And then this is all just going to be divided by n times the summation of t squared minus um, the summation of t squared as a component. And then after we do this, we calculate the slope, we're going to end up calculating, I'm going to call this alpha. So in linear regression, right, you have y equals alpha plus beta times t in our case. This would be actually x, um, an example above. But this equation is going to apply to here. And so to calculate this, we're just going to rearrange the equation. So it's y minus beta times t, and this will give us our alpha. Um, in this case, what we're going to end up doing is just taking alpha, which is equal to y hat um, minus beta times um, t hat. What we're really saying here is we're just going to be doing um, the average of y, which is going to be denoted as y hat, um, minus our beta times um, the average of the t's. And so to do this, what we're going to do here is we're just going to create more columns. And I'll upload this Excel sheet so you guys can look at it as well. Um, time and y were already given. So this component here, you can see this is simply going to be um, your y column times t, which in this case is going to be 3.89414, and then times t. And if you remember here, um, t is just equal to 1. So you just get the same value back, which gives us this y of t. And if you keep going down, we'll do the same thing. So this next one is going to be 3.40792 um, multiplied by 2, and this will give you um, 6.81584. 
Anyways, you just drag and drop this. You can do the calculations by hand if you want as well, just as like an example. Um, anyways, and then we're going to do the same concept here. We're going to create um, the t squared here. So this is really t squared uh, divided by t2. Um, so it's just time. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared um, is going to be 4, 3 squared is going to be 9, and so forth all the way down. And then we're going to actually predict this trend column by using our calculations. And let's just do that real quick. So I don't know if you guys noticed this here, but this last column kind of stops right here at row 35. Uh, everything else down here is going to be a summation. So uh, 148.065, right? This is going to be the summation of y. Uh, the next one's going to be the summation of y times t and the summation of t squared. And then 136 is going to be the summation of time. So again, if we plug these numbers in here and actually do the math, what we're going to end up with is our beta coefficient is going to be equal to n, which is 16, so the number of observations we have here, um, times the summation of x and y. And that's going to be uh, y and t here. So this is be this 1,585.58. And then we're going to subtract uh, summation of x, which in our case is summation of t. So summation of t here is going to be um, 136. So this is going to be our summation of time, our trend component. And then times the summation of uh, y, and the summation of y is 148.065. And this whole thing is divided out by, again, n, which is 16. And this is multiplied by uh, the summation of t squared. So this is 1,496. And then this is going to be minus uh, the summation of t, which in our case is going to be 136. And then it's going to be this value squared. And if you do the math calculations, which again, you can do by yourself, uh, you'll end up with 0 0.9618 and I've also denoted it in the Excel sheet um, right here. And then the next step here is going to be calculating out our alpha. Okay, so this equation here um, for your alpha, which is going to be A, uh, this is going to be um, the average of Y minus beta times um, the average of uh, t, which is time, and what this is going to give you is 9.25 minus 0 0.96, again, use all the decimals if you want more accuracy, times uh, 8.5, and then this will end up giving you 1.0783, which is, again, um, this number up here, this alpha that we've looked at, and then we're just gonna actually plot this line. And so to plot this line, we're just gonna end up adding all this together and creating our quick equation. And so to create this trend line, um, it's just going to be T, which is going to be equal to our trend, which is alpha 1.0783 plus um, our beta, which is 0 0.96185, um, and then times T. And if you do this equation, this gets put in um, to this trend column, and you'll end up with all these values calculated below. Um, again, it stops at line 35. Below that is just going to be uh, the summation. And so when you plot that out, you'll end up with this chart. Um, the blue line is the trend that we just created, uh, given our intercept and our slope. So just as a side note here, if you were to right click on um, the data here in this chart in Excel and hit add trend line, and click the little box that has the equation with it, you'll end up with this equation, which is y is equal to 0 0.9619 times x, that's our beta, and then plus 1.0783, that was the alpha. So you can see the equation and calculations we just did uh, will give you the exact same answer as doing it by hand. All right, so what I should note here is that uh, we had y is equal to the trend times the cyclicality, and then you have this error term. Um, what we're going to end up doing is just dividing out the trend. So we calculated the trend. We're going to create a new column, which is going to be um, y divided by trend 
Um, and this is going to give you your cyclical components and your error terms. And if you actually plot these, you'll get the cyclical component here, which you can see. Um, we seem to have an annual effect. So quarter one of the first year, and then quarter one of the second year, and then quarter one of the third year and the fourth year. And so what we're going to do is we want to calculate the same amount of error for each quarter. Uh, to do this quarterly adjustment, what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, so the quarter one adjustment is going to be um, the average of uh, the quarterly one values here. And then to do quarter two, we're going to do the same thing. This is going to be the average of the um, second quarters and so on and so forth until you get the average of your fourth quarters. And what's gonna happen is what we're saying is that the average value, so in this case, these, right? You're gonna have the average of your first quarter of the first year, average of the first quarter of the second year, average of the first quarter of the third year, an average of the first quarter of the fourth year. Um, this is going to be our average adjustment for the first quarter of each year. Again, as we said above, we're going to do the average for the second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. And what this should end up getting us is a table somewhat like this, where again, you'll see in the Excel here, we did the Y divided by T, and then we end up calculating out the averages here for each column. So if you notice here, right, the first quarter here of the first year is the average of the first quarter of the three years below. So each first quarter value will be the exact same, 1.386 for that one, 1.386 for the second year first quarter, and again, 1.386 for the third year first quarter, and for the fourth year first quarter. So these four values here are they gonna be the four unique values for each quarter. And this will be your cyclical estimate um, for each quarter based on annual cyclical patterns here. And so now that we have um, our trend, so again, things we're gonna be looking at here, we have our trend column and we have our cyclical column. We're just going to do, you know, Y is equal to um, trend times the cyclical portion. Um, I'm gonna call this P for prediction. You could also call this Y hat if you wanted to. But all we're doing is multiplying um, this, this trend column with the uh, cyclical column and we're gonna get our prediction here. And if you actually multiply these together, you get column P, and you'll see this is our prediction. So why are the actuals, the blue line is P, which is the predictions. It looks okay, not super fancy. Um, again, I'd recommend looking at this in a different perspective. So instead of looking at this in a linear kind of line drawn out format, um, I prefer looking at this as dots versus dots. And when you look at here, Right, the model seems to do fairly well. We've got a little bit of a gap here, hardly anything here, a little bigger, but I mean, you see these predictions are good. And if you were to compare this to what we were talking about originally, which is if you just use T, so just the trend line here, um, you can see right between the red dots and our prediction line here, these errors would be a lot larger um, than what we're getting with the blue line here. And so this can be used for prediction. If you went back here and say um, erased out, right, this value, so these are the summation. So say we want to do a prediction here, but let's say you had observation 17. Um, y is going to be empty. We don't have an actual for that. We don't have Y of T again, right? We don't need to do any of this calculation. Um, but what we would do was we would take um, our trend model here, right? So the alpha plus beta one, um, times x1 here, so times 17, which is going to be our t. And this value here would give you 17.43 for the trend component. And then the cyclical component, uh, we've already looked at the past, right? We know that the first quarter of every year is going to be this 1.3860 And all we'd have to do is multiply, again, this trend component uh, with the cyclical component. And when you multiply these together, this gives us a prediction of 24.158. And if you were to look back on this chart here, um, we would end up with 24.8, which would be somewhere like right up in here. But again, if you were to connect these dots, as we talked about before, right, 
this does seem to match the pattern which we've been talking about. And it will keep going at the same trend rate. So anyways, that's kind of the example here. I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, you should be able to see that this can be broken down in a multiplicative model, meaning we take the trend, we multiply that by the cycle. And if you wanted to, you can multiply this by a seasonality effect or a sub-sub seasonality effect or whatnot. But anyways, that's the simple model. I will upload this on a doc online so you guys can play with this if you'd like. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.